Well, and in this demonstration, I'm just going to talk about how you can actually install Jenkins as a your CI CD tool on AWS EC2 instances. So, as you can see in my screen, I have already created an EC2 instance T2 Micro as just for the demonstration purpose under the and Virginia region in US East One, and that's the name of my instance, which is called Jenkins Server Demo US East One. Uh, so, this is a very basic instance. I'm just using it just to showing the demonstrations about how you can actually install the Jenkins. This currently instance is not behind any load balancer, but in the coming video, I'm going to show how you can make it your inst Jenkins instant and the master slave or the master worker node agents to be complete inside the private VPC. But for the sake of the beginners videos as a demonstration, I'm just focusing on just how you can actually launch an EC2 instance and how you can actually able to uh, deploy your Jenkins server on an EC2 instance. So the server is already up and running and uh, before start of the video what I have done is like I have installed uh, I am SSM agent on it so this is the role instance profile I have at attached to it and this is uh, pretty much I am role has nothing much information apart from the AWS uh, SSM instance code so this policies contain some of the things which is required by the SSM agents to be able to run. So what I have done is there is a documentation when you gonna click on the connect button on the instance, it will show you some different options to a way to connect to the instance. So you have an EC2 instance connect way, you have a session manager, SSH client, which is using a key pair and EC2 serial console. In the SSN manager, if you by default, if you are not providing inside the user data or you don't install the SSM agent is not running in your EC2 instance, then you will not able to connect. I highly recommend to every user to use the session manager as much as possible because it does not require you to connect and give your private and public keys to anyone on of any of the devs if working in your company. So I have already uh, established uh, as a session manager on this instance. So I'm just gonna use the session manager on my browser itself so I don't have to worry about. So let me just close other windows. So as you can see, now I'm connect connected with my account. So if I'm just gonna type the bash, this is an Ubuntu 2024 uh, instance which I have installed. So let me just go to the root folder. And if I just type sudo hyphen dash just to convert it into the root. Now what I'm gonna do is like I'm just open the documentation about installing the Jenkins. So according to the Jenkins documentation, uh, those of people who don't even know about what is a Jenkins, Jenkins is a, a CI as well as CD tool. It depends upon the context, how you are building your um, continuous improvement or continuous integrations and continuous deployment or development pipelines. It can be used as both as a tool. So to install a Jenkins, it can be installed on your Docker, Kubernetes, Mac, Linux, Windows, everywhere, whichever the servers or the operating systems you like to have. Uh, the Some of the prerequisites to install the Jenkins is like they have recommended like minimum hardware is 256 MB of RAM and one gigabyte of a drive space. But I find this will make your Jenkins servers quite slow. So it is highly recommended uh, to go with the recommended hardware software configurations for a smaller teams for four gigabyte of RAM with the 50 gigabyte of drive space. And there is a requirement they have already specified like you should have the Java and the web browsers compatibility for Windows. They have the support policy and for Linux there is a different support policies. So before and they have provided for the different operating systems like a Debian, Ubuntu or Fedora or Red Hat Linux. About and they also provided uh, if you like to have the LTS version, which is the long term support version, which is chosen every 12 weeks from the streams of the regular releases at the stable release for that period. Or you can go for the weekly release basis using this commands. But before installing this, we need to have the installation of the Java. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the commands because I have already updated the machine. So it's, it's already going to be uh, run the sudo apd update to update any packages if required to be updated. So as we can see, it's uh, saying four packages can be upgraded. So I'm just going to run upgrade with hyphen y means I'm saying yes, just upgrade them. While this is happening, I'm just going to go back and r install the open JDK 11 JRE. 
Once this is going to be done, I'm just going to run that command to install the OpenJDK 11 version. So we're just going to wait for a little while once it's done and press OK. Press OK. Sounds good. Looks everything's good. So it's asking me, do you want to continue? Yes. So it's currently installing the JDK version 11 and then I'm just going to verify that Java version has been installed. If I see something like this about the open JDK version 11.0.12, something like that, and the JDK runtime environments, then it's, it should be, looks good. So once this is done, I'm just going to check. So let's just go and see the Java version. So yes, I can see like open JDK versions 11 the runtime environment. So everything looks good. So now I have installation of the Java has been completed. So now I'm just going to go up for the Ubuntu because uh, the, my server is in Ubuntu based, not the Fedora or Red Hat Linux based. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy the command, all of them at once. And I'm just going to copy paste here. So what these commands are doing is like it's if you just notice the commands, it's just to first making a curl request to this uh, URL and try to actually copy the key rings to the dev null uh, location. And then it's just echoing the dev value from this. And then you're just updating the, all the packages and then you're trying to install the Jenkins. Nothing fancy is happening on that. And once it's actually install the Jenkins. I'm just going to run a command systemctl just to see if the Jenkins server has been actually working fine. If it's working fine, then what we're going to do since we has not set up any uh, route 53 DNS records yet. So it's not going to be pop up using something. So in the end of the uh, upcoming videos, what I'm going to show is like how you can actually create something like this. So this is my company. Uh, website so I'm just going to use like jenkins.shareware.com and when I'm going to hit it behind the load balancer it will going to open up the the login page or the dashboard URL for the Jenkins itself but for the now we will just going to try to hit it using a public IP address although it is never recommended to run your Jenkins instance in the public and it should not have any public address associated with it because it's it's an internal tool which you wanted to use in your company for building your uh, CICD pipeline. So I highly recommend put it behind some private VPC to manage your work. So let's see how much the process has been done. Which service? DB bus is fine. So now if we just check system CDL status Jenkins dot service. So we can see the Jenkins service continuous integration server loaded from the library system d system jenkins dot service enable vendor present enable and active is running fine so it's all looks good so by default if i just type ps of the processor or you can say like if if i'm actually interested in see whether the jenkins is running fine or not if i'm just gonna hit 8080 then we will, by default, the Jenkins, when it is installed, it's actually installed on the port 8080. So if everything is going, looks okay, then it should, by default, able to hit this IP address and able to install the Jenkins and able to give you the dashboard URL for that site. If it's not, let's just try to add the HTTPS in front of it. And if it's not loading anything, then make sure, make sure you are checking that your uh, ports are correct having the permissions so let me just check for the ports for the any inbound rules if I needed to add might be the case I need to add something I need to add the uh, port 8080 in it for the HTTPS so what I'm gonna do is like a custom TCP 8080 currently just for the demonstration purpose I'm using anywhere uh, to allow the traffic to be for the inbound rule but it is not recommended to put the 8080 reason i did it because it's actually needed to open on 8080 so now if i'm going to hit it you can see it's uh, uh, the security group has allowed the ip address anywhere ip address from the world can actually try to hit this ip and it will going to work now this is the jenkins server is the base starting point for you so first thing first you need to 
ensure that Jenkins is securely set up by the administrator and passwords has been written to login and this file on the server. So first we need to go to the AWS session manager and what we have to do is like just type cat just to see the password of that initial password. So this is the initial admin password for this Jenkins. Once you're going to put the password, it's going to ask you whether you like to have uh, wanted to install some plugins or not. So let's just say I just want to install the default, not the default plugins. I just want to install certain plugins. And once you're going to click on it, it's just going to start installing and do it. Don't worry about it. If uh, currently, if you're seeing on my uh, demonstrations that the connection is not secure, I have opened the security group to allowed all. It is never a good practice to do that. So it's just a demonstration purpose about for the beginners to see how Jenkins works. It's not for the uh, intermediate or expert levels to be behind, you're putting behind the private VPC or uh, make sure that no external network or the IP addresses are allowed inside the company's network to hit and able to access the Jenkins as your CI server or CI CD server. So currently you can see like I have allowed a bunch of address. I need to allow this port range 8080 on the TCP on HTTPS because uh, currently if I'm not going to do that, then I'm not able to access that. So now it's asking me after installing the plugins, asking me to set up the name. So let's just say I'm just going to put shared demo and I'm just going to put random password. Demo YouTube. and I'm just gonna provide it. I was Sharma at Sharma.com. So I'm just gonna do save and continue. And if everything looks fine, it's asking me for the configurations, and I'm just gonna say, Yep, all looks good. And it's just gonna start using your Jenkins. So, congratulations, everyone, if you are following along the video. So, you can see your Jenkins has been installed. It's a very pretty basic. Uh, standard Jenkins server which is running behind an EC2. It's not been configured properly on the security level to be honest. Uh, as you can see the connection is not secure and now you can see it's only have one user which any user can be accessed from anywhere and we can also see about like there is not much plugins has been installed. So what we're going to do now since the Jenkins server has been installed and up and running we will going to try to put it behind a certain IP addresses rather than allowing all the sources network IP addresses from everywhere. We will just going to try to put it behind a certain public IP address of my VPN that should be only allowed to access this uh, Jenkins. And we will also going to put it behind the load balancer so that we don't have to worry about like just so that it becomes uh, having able to handle the highly traffic of the users of the companies of the employees when they try to use uh, the CICD pipelines or building some things on the Jenkins. And then we will gonna, I'm going to show you uh, with using a load balancer how we can actually able to protect it and make it a secure SSL and TLS uh, certificate on it using the ACM which is the uh, Amazon or you can say AWS certificate manager. Uh, that's it for this video. Please continue watch the next video in the series to find out how you can make it more protected and how to make it more highly available and highly reliable. I'm also planning to coming up uh, uh, deploying the Jenkins inside the Kubernetes and you can just watch that video. So it depends upon whether you want to deploy it as a standard uh, generic EC2 instance on a Ubuntu, Fedora or Red Hat Linux or you want to deploy it as a Docker or you want to deploy it as a Kubernetes. Uh, depends upon whatever the way you like to do. Uh, just keep following and we're going to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.